Welcome to this uh, shortwave radio channel and this is a quick video for beginners and we're going to talk about the solar activity and how it affects the shortwave propagation in the simplest way possible. So radio propagation of shortwave signals is dependent on solar activity. The ionosphere is actually ionized and maintained because of the solar energy and the solar radiation that hits the upper atmosphere. Now, depending on the amount of energy the sun is sending us, it changes the properties of the ionosphere. So the sun goes into a cycle that is 11 years on average. We are right now at the low part of the cycle. And we're going to have a separate video talking about the low part and higher part of the cycle and what it means. On this one, we're just going to use one website that has very, very simple um, numbers that I will actually tell you to look at. There are, uh, you know, there's a lot of different things that can be looked at. There's websites with, you know, the quality of propagation of certain uh, bands and so on. We'll focus on a very simple thing, a page that I will share here on this, um, this in the description below this video. And it's this one that has three simple numbers. And that is the basics of the understanding of radio propagation. What do these three numbers mean? The first one that says SFI, right now it says 70. This is what we call the solar flux index. In other words, think about that number as the amount of energy the sun is sending us at one time. It, it goes from 60 at the, the lowest that can, it can be is 60. The highest I believe is 400. Now you see that 70 is not very far from 60, so that is an indication of being at solar minimum, by the way. The amount of energy is lower. That affects shortwave propagation, and we'll show you how it affects shortwave propagation in the next video where we're going to talk about the uh, differences in the uh, solar activity and so on and what happens. So what you want in simple terms is the solar flux index to be the highest number possible in general. Let's put it as simple as that. Once again, there's a lot more affecting propagation than just simple numbers and that simple solar flux. But for the purpose of understanding the basics, think of solar flux, that number being the highest that you want. The other one we'll look at is the K index. So you see here it says K equal one. The K index is an indication of the stability of the geomagnetic field around the earth. Because we have a major, you know, a big magnetic field around the planet. And depending on how disturbed this geomagnetic field is, it can actually affect the propagation of signals by destroying uh, the ionosphere, for example, by making it less, um, you know, usable. What you want on the K index is that this number, which goes from zero to nine, stays the lowest possible. So if the K index is zero or one in this case, indication that the geomagnetic field is quiet, usually indication that shortwave propagation shouldn't be too disturbed and shouldn't be too bad. Once again, it's more complex than that, but the simple terms. The A index in the middle is average. It's an average of the last 24 hours of the K index. That goes very high and it has a weird, you know, the K index goes from zero to nine, but the A index can go above 100. It's, it's the way that they actually check it out. I don't look at the A index much because it's the average of the last 24 hours where the K index is more you know, actual of what's happening now or in the last few hours. So the K index for me is more important, but the A index is an indication of what happened in the last 24 hours. The higher that number, that means the more geomagnetic 
uh, disturbance there was in the last 24 hours. So for the purpose of understanding the basics of the basics, think about the solar flux or SFI that you see here, having the highest solar flux possible and the K index, the lowest possible. So if you remember that, you already have a very basic understanding of propagation of signals. Solar flux, the highest possible. K index, zero, one, perfect. When it goes higher, uh, it could start degrading shortwave sometimes. One of the indications that's interesting here on this um, these numbers is that you see that they are colored and they are green. Well, when the K index or A index start rising, they change color. So they'll go from green to yellow to red. So you have a color code that indicates when it's good and when it's not. Green, not bad. Yellow, you got some disturbance and it might affect shortwave. Red, severe geomagnetic storming and possibly, you know, shortwave blackouts and all sorts of things happening. But like I said, it's more complex than that. But at least, you know, this is a basics of understanding that will help you if you see propagation isn't good or if you want to understand, um, you know, are things getting better? Well, you could look at these numbers and um, have a small idea of what conditions could be like uh, in general. If you enjoy my videos, please subscribe, give us a thumbs up. Thank you for watching.